Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about energy neutralizers and how to get the maximum effectiveness out of them. In any area of the game, wherever you can get little edges, it's going to help you to fly better and all those little edges are going to add up to make you a better pilot and to give you more victories. So in this video, this is actually a very, very short segment of a long battle I had with my Artie Hurricane oh, about a week ago. And in this fight, I got lots of kills. It went on for a long time. It was a lot of fun. But this video is actually a part of my upcoming Hurricane Pro Guide, which will be released in about a week, maybe more, hopefully less, from the release of this video. So depending on when you're watching this, it may already be out. If so, you can go to ePro Guides to find it. But for this video, I'm using the Artie Hurricane. It has two newts on it. They're two small newts, so not even the best newts. On the Auto Cannon Cane, there's medium newts. But for this one, because of Power Grid, they're small newts. So in this video, I want to talk to you about what you can do to get the most out of energy neutralizers and what you need to know so that you don't have other people exploiting the weakness of your energy neutralizers. I ideally would have done this with a Curse or a Pilgrim because that's when it really counts the most and that's when I learned these lessons was back when I was flying the Curse and the Pilgrim and I had to learn these lessons the hard way because they got me killed um, several times so and po possibly cost me some kills I don't know but I learned the hard way and now I try to make a habit of always doing this this one thing so let's start the video I guess I should give you some background. I uh, attacked a Brutix out of planet, and this I've got all this on video from before this, but if I showed you the whole thing, it would take us forever to do it, and we don't have that much time just to cover this one topic. So I tackled a Brutix at the planet, and I knew there was probably some backup coming, and this is right as I'm about to drop the Brutix, and right after his friends warped in, and they all warped in about 60 to 80k away from us. Um, I'm not too threatened by most of them. The tornado, I think, might be able to hit me from this range, but the others can't do anything. The Tyrannus is my main threat on the field right now, because if that Tyrannus gets in close and orbits at, you know, say 500 meters or anything really close, my Artie's not going to track it. So let's let's go ahead and start the video. So as you can see, I'm finishing off the Brutix here, giving it some heat, trying to pop him fast. Now ideally, what I wanted was to pop that Brutix and have him down before the Tyrannus got this close. Because if I had locked the Tyrannus a little bit earlier, popped the Brutix, got my gun cycle finished, I could have popped that Tyrannus on its way in. However, gun cycle still going, Tyrannus is already in, his micro warp drive is running, you can see that up there in the velocity. And now you can see, let's move this out of the way, my microwarp drive just shut off, so he's got me scrammed, and he also has me webbed. So my velocity is dropping quickly, and the rest of his fleet is starting to gain on me pretty fast, uh, especially the Legion, which you can see in the radial velocity, which is how fast we're closing. The Legion's gaining by 918 meters a second, getting closer. The others are still moving away slightly, but that won't stay that way for long. So at this point, the Tyrannus has me tackled, and he's in orbit. My Artie will not hit him, and I'm not even really trying at this point, I don't think, because I know my Artie won't hit him. So let's go back just a little bit, and I want you to watch how I initiate my newts, or how I turn them on. Let's see. One, two. Now notice I didn't do F3, F4. Notice I didn't click them really fast together. I didn't go click, click really fast. That's because, let's talk a little bit about mechanics. The mechanics of the newts, and these are small newts. So I've got two newts here. Some ships only have one newt. Some have two, some have three, four, whatever. But the way that newts work is the small newts have a cycle time of six seconds. So... A lot of people think that because like there's that little stream coming from your ship going to the opponent's ship, that the energy neutralization is consistent throughout that six second cycle. But in fact, it's all at once. So you initiate your newt, then bang, everything, all the newting it's going to do is done right then. And for the next six seconds or five and a half or whatever, 
it sits there and does absolutely nothing. Now for small newts, that's not as big of an issue. But when you go up to medium newts, it's a 12 second cycle. So now you've got 11 and a half, 12 seconds, where absolutely nothing is going on and your target's capacitor is regenerating. Take that to heavy newts and now you've got 24 seconds. 24 second cycles on your neutralizers. Now what that means is, and I've done this more times than I can count in frigates, is like if you're in a battleship with newts and you newt a frigate that's got you tackled, that frigate without any kind of cap booster, without anything else, with just natural recharge, can operate his frigate almost at 100% without any problem in between your neutral, neutralization cycles. So in between the newt cycles, there's going to be enough capacitor regeneration to run the ship with no problem. Now on a smaller scale, for example on the scale of this Tyrannus, if I were to run both newts at the exact same moment, then they would probably destroy the capacitor of the Tyrannus, completely remove all of his capacitor down to zero. But then for the next six seconds he would regen. So for the next six seconds he would probably get enough capacitor to re-engage his scram, maybe his web, and worst of all, potentially his micro warp drive. That's the thing we really don't want him to use is his micro warp drive. Because if he can use his micro warp drive, he can stay with me and he can keep up his transversal, which means I can't hit him and his buddies are closing. So what I do to keep him capacitor dead more of the time and in between the cycle, and I didn't do it perfect here because I was under the heat of the fire and you know too much worried about the battlefield, but I did it somewhat and I should have done it a little bit better. But I clicked the first one, then the second one. And I didn't do it all at once. I waited a second in between. So ideally, I would have let this little white thing come halfway around, then clicked this one so that they were completely opposite of each other. So it was with a three-second cycle, you would click this one, one, two, three, click this one. And then now you've got the neutralizer going off every three seconds, meaning that he only has three seconds of natural regeneration in between the cycles. I did it somewhat here, but I only gave it about a one second delay instead of the three seconds that I really should have. So let's look at what the result of that was. Now something else here, I've got ECM drones. So I'm not really in that much trouble here, so I feel safe that I can ECM drone the Tyrannus and get out, but I want to kill the Tyrannus ideally. So now everything's looking okay got the ECM drones out. I forget to engage them, I guess. I'm getting aligned to something away from their fleet because I want to make sure I'm constantly moving away and increasing the time it takes for their fleet to get on top of me. I've engaged my ECM drones and if you look up here, he's red. It's hard to tell if he's locked. It looks like his lock just broke. You can see the point web just, just dropped. Okay, so I'm going to start it up again. So a couple things. His He's ECM, so his point and his web have now dropped. That means I can kick on my micro warp drive and start moving away from this hostile fleet again and putting distance in between me and the Tranus because what the biggest effect of my newts was that I've turned off his micro warp drive and either he can't turn it back on because of capacitor or really more likely he doesn't realize it's off. He's sitting there with no micro warp drive on and now watch what he does. He's still trying to orbit at 500. He's still trying to orbit at 500 when he's moving at a max speed of what 445, and with my micro warp drive, I'm doing like 1500 or something like that. So you can see now I'm moving away, but now the Legion has me pointed. So I start to panic a little bit because I didn't want the Legion to get a point on me, and I'm worried that that Legion's going to get in and tie me down. So with that. I'm starting to think I need to warp out. I'm hoping I can get enough speed to outrun the point of the Legion, and I go to overload my micro warp drive to assist with that. So I'm trying to warp, and at this point, right about here, I realize, hold on, the Tyrannus is still approaching me. So he's sitting there approaching to get his orbit at 500. He's approaching with no micro warp drive on straight at me, he has no transversal velocity. 
my arty will track him perfectly and he's right about in the sweet spot of my arties to do their maximum alpha a little bit beyond it but I can track him really nice there at 16 17 K so I realized that and I, st I stopped trying to warp off and I again try to go for the Tyrannus and watch what happens one shot point didn't even get a chance to engage Tyrannus down so right there the newts now maybe or maybe not my staggering of the newts got me that kill probably not but in a lot of cases it's little things like that where your opponent stays cap dead for more of the time that gets you the the extra kills and give you the edge so I got away there but that's not the end of that fight that fight went on for a while after that I had to go repair and uh, then I started to engage them on a gate after that but the basic lesson here is if you're using energy neutralizers, especially on a ship like a Pilgrim or a Curse, you need to stagger your newts. You need to space the cycles so that you keep your opponent cap dead for more of the cycle time. So let me give you an example of how I died in my Curse. I was, I think I was in a fleet of, it was battle cruisers with a couple Tech 2 cruisers. This was two years ago I'm guessing and I was leading the fleet and tackling in front or either that or I was scouting a, to a side system or something and I jumped into a gate into a system through a gate and there was a Drake a flashy Drake sitting there on the gate so I knew that my fleet was about a jump and a half two jumps behind me so I called them in uncloaked tackled the Drake and Stayed at range, kept him neutered. I thought I had him, but evidently he was able to get in and get a scram on me before I was able to get out to my kite orbit or whatever. Somehow or another, he got a scram on me. So I figured, okay, no big deal. I'm going to newt him, and I'm going to get away. So I lined to something, and I kept my newts going. But the problem was I had my newts on both at the same time, or actually all, I think I had three newts. I had all of them on the same cycle so there was the the 12 seconds in between that he was able to reinitiate his scram and warp scramblers take almost no capacitor same thing for damage controls if you want to keep those modules off and they're keeping a damage control off for the entirety of a fight is going to drastically lower your opponent's hit points and make the fight go a lot faster and give you a big edge but in this case he was able to keep that scram on me so no micro warp drive no ability to warp and by the time my fleet got there he was able to keep it on the entire time because I didn't stagger my newts and because of that I lost a curse and that was one of the hard lessons I learned that taught me that I need to stagger those newts to make sure that I can keep them cap dead for more of the time so what was happening there is the uh, the scram has a cycle time too so every time his scram cycle came up to need cap he had to cap to, to restart it because I had all of my newts on on the same cycle. So there's that 12 seconds in between. And unless he needed to get that scram in on the exact second that all three newts hit him and cap and drained out his cap, his newt was or his scram was going to keep going indefinitely. So that's why it's really important to keep your newts staggered and to try to practice that and use that in fights.